of Sunday, September the 30th. We're on our way into the month of October, and I'm just so excited and honored for this privilege to be able to come before you and to share a word of encouragement that will continue to lift you, uh, to comfort you, uh, to give you deeper revelation. I want to begin by uh, just reminding everyone how thankful we are uh, for this family that we have, uh, all of you who comment and all of you who are taking the time uh, to view these videos. We count it a blessing and we thank the Lord for the privilege of serving. Uh, so this morning will not be like, uh, it will be uh, as every other morning uh, here. I am before the uh, praise and worship services at our church and I have uh, just a few moments to share a word of encouragement with you. I wanted to remind you of, of Abraham. I'm, I'm in the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Romans. And um, I just want to remind you of uh, how faithful God is and how important it is that we just really believe uh, the promises of God. We must believe the promises of God. Our belief, we must believe. If God said it, we must believe it. That is what helps to encourage us through the difficult times. That's what helps to uh, keep us uh, rooted and grounded and centered in Christ Jesus. That's what helps to get us uh, through what we go through on this journey that we call life. And so you'll be reminded in the book of Romans in the fourth chapter, I'm just going to pick up at the um, 19th verse. Uh, I always encourage you to read the entire chapter, of course, the entire book, uh, but I'm going to pick up at Romans 4, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And so we are reminded once again, we understand as believers, uh, there's justification, sanctification, and glorification. When we believe on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and received all that he accomplished on his cross at Calvary, his finished works, we are justified. We're justified. We are now in the sanctification process, waiting for glorification. We'll be glorified, Paul says, in the book of Corinthians when Jesus Christ returns for his church. We're in the sanctification process, as it were, right now. We've been justified by faith. We receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We've been redeemed. Uh, we're in the sanctification process. And so the Lord God has made promises to us as his children, uh, as his people still in the earth realm. Uh, he's even made promises uh, that we're able to stand on and we are to believe those promises. You can't enter in, we can't enter in to the promise unless we have belief. Belief, belief, that's the cost of admission. To get into the promise, the realm of the promise, we must believe the promise. Uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we must believe. Jesus said when you pray, believe that you have what you're praying for. It's the belief, the belief. We have to have this belief. We have to have this belief. When we believe by faith, we believe by faith. Again, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We believe the promises. When God makes a promise, God does not break his promises. He's not a man that she, he should lie. When God makes a promise, we can, we can be confident that the Lord God is able to fulfill whatever promises that he has made. But we, we have to believe the promises. Uh, we, we are not to look at the illusion, that which is around us, that which is uh, trying to deceive us. Uh, we have to look at the true word. We have to look at the truth of what the word of the Lord reveals to us, the revelation of the word. We must keep our mind focused on the truth, on the promises of God. And in order to do that, the word of the Lord uh, has uh, reminded us that we are to meditate 
on the Word of God. You have to have the Word of God always in your mind. You have to always be thinking about the truth. Uh, even when you see a lie, hear a lie, you have to cast out that lie, cast out uh, that which you have heard that is not true, and you cast it out by replacing the lie with the truth, which is the word of God that you have meditated on so that it is in your heart, and when you need it, you're able to bring it up, and you're able to cast out the lies of the devil. The, the, the true word of God, it must be in your heart. And I have found, uh, personally, I have the Word of God always uh, around me. I have the Word of God in my car. I have the Word of God in my kitchen, in my sitting room, in my dining room, my living room, my bedroom, my bathroom, my closets, my office. Wherever I go, I have the Word of God. But more than that, I have the Word of God in me. Jesus Christ lives in us. He lives in us, and His Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. And so we have to have the Word of God in us and near us and on us and all around us so that the truth is always, always giving us this hedge of protection and that our, that our gateways are always uh, shored up, that there are no cracks in the gateways in our eyes and our ears and that which we encounter, that we're always filled to overflowing with the word of the Lord. So that even if you think that you see sickness, the word of the Lord says by his stripes, we are healed. So you meditate on those words. If you're sick in your body right now, if you're sick in your soul, if you're sick in every area of your life. If you need help, then find every scripture that speaks to health and speaks to healing, the promises of the Lord, and meditate on that. I have a, I have a scripture board. I know there are many of you have vision boards. Uh, besides a vision board, have a scripture board. I have a scripture board. Every time I open my closet, there's scripture there. Always have the word of the Lord before you. Meditate on the true word, because we live in this world, once again, but we're not of this world. And so this world, the dark of this world is always trying to deceive you but the true word of the Lord the manifestation of that true word it helps you to get through whatever we must go through while we're still on this journey once again that we call life and so every now and again you have to even encourage yourself David encouraged himself sometimes you have to encourage yourself and the way that you encourage yourself is by meditating on the word of the Lord what does the Lord God's word what does the Lord say about your situation what does the Lord say about your situation. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in man. Trust in the word of the Lord. What does the Lord say? The Lord's word says he supplies all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You meditate on that. You, you ask the Holy Spirit to give you more revelation. You think about that word, not just when you read it, not just when you see it, but you let that word be in you and all during the day. And whenever something comes against you that, and it looks like you have lack or looks like you don't have enough. Let that, that word and every other word that speaks to the prosperity and the care and the protection of the Lord God, let that word be in you. Let it be in you and let it flow in you and through you so that you get through what you have to get through and you come out of it stronger and wiser and better with a testimony that you can use to help somebody else come out of whatever they're going through. And so I just want to continue to encourage you to stay in the word of the Lord. We're entering into a new month. Tomorrow, Monday is October the 1st, and as the Lord has allowed me to share with you uh, in, our, in the earth realm, uh, on the Gregorian calendar, we know that the month of October uh, uh, begins the last quarter of our year, and it is one of the most, it is the most prosperous uh, time, the most prosperous quarter on the calendar, spiritually, and for our souls and our bodies, our finances, our relationships, everything that pertains to us in these last uh, days of this 2018. Remember, this time will never come around again. And as we just look forward to the newness, all that the Lord has stored up for us that's being released for us, that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we are being prepared for more more. Next year ought to be more for you. You ought to be doing more for the Lord. He saved us, set us free, healed us, delivered us, redeemed us because he has work. We are his body for us to do in the earth realm, to glorify him. And so he blesses us to be a blessing. He wants to make sure that all grace abounds toward you, that you always having sufficiency in all things will have more than enough to do every great work. I'm paraphrasing. The Lord wants us to be blessed so that we can glorify him and do more in the earth realm. And so I am encouraging you 
encourage yourself in the word of the Lord. Remember, the Lord God is able to open up portals that no man can shut. He shuts portals that no man can open, even in this very intensely spiritual time that we find ourselves in. God is still sovereign. He has his hands on us. We are his children, his people. And so whatever portals need to be shut, he's able to shut them, and no man can open them. Every portal that needs to be opened, he opens those portals, and no man can close it. Whatever you need, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, you have it in Christ Jesus, but you must believe the word of the Lord. You must believe it. Abraham didn't look at his circumstances, the word of the Lord says. He didn't look at Sarah's circumstances. He didn't, he didn't focus on what was around him and, and, and what the clock said about his age and, 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 and what biology said about when you can and cannot uh, have children. He didn't look at that. He looked at the promise of God. He stayed focused on the promises of God. He believed it. And because he believed it, it was imputed unto him righteousness. Believe the word of the Lord. What promises have been spoken over your life and what promises have been revealed to you in the word of the Lord? Believe them. God is able. His word never returns unto him void. It always accomplishes that. It is being sent forth to accomplish. And remember, there are different. There are so many levels of the of, of the prophetic. There are so many levels of the prophetic. You go from the shallow uh, to the deeper depth of the prophetic. And so, just be reminded that a part of the prophetic is encouraging. A part of the prophetic is comforting. A part of, of the prophetic is just. Of reminding the Lord's people of how good he is. And if you're going to prophesy, if you're going to be a part of the prophetic, a part of that is also teaching. And also prosperity is always attached to the prophetic. And all of this is biblical. As you know, I only have a few moments. I speak to those who I believe are, are already following uh, the word of the Lord. I hope that you are in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church I hope that you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so I hope that when I come before you, when you see these videos, that I just give you some encouragement and some inspiration to go deeper into the word of the Lord, to go deeper into the scriptures that I share with you, to go deeper into those paraphrases that I share with you so that you are able to be encouraged and built up and comforted for that which the Lord God has created you to do. My time is up. I love you in the Lord. God bless you. Welcome every new subscriber. I thank uh, all of you who send such wonderful, beautiful, Christ-centered uh, comments our way, those who keep us lifted up in prayer. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank the Lord for you. We appreciate you. We love you. Have a blessed, 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 Christ-centered life. And I'll see you at the next viewing of this recording. Amen.